In today's video, we are looking into why Roth Talia loves Naofumi and breaking it down. We've all seen it, from the blushing in thoughts of Naofumi to the jealousy shown towards Philo getting close to her master to the happy swing of her tail when in her love interest's company. It's clear to see from Roth Talia's actions that she has romantic feelings for him, and from what we have seen in their interactions together, it's easy to get a basic idea of how and why these feelings have developed. But I want to go into it in a bit more detail detail than that and further explain these obvious reasons, let's say. So to do this, we are going to break down aspects of Roth Talia, both before and with Naofumi using the anime, manga, and light novel, so we are covering as much detail as we can to paint a fuller picture. As always, make sure to smash the like button and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more Shield Hero videos on the channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well so you'll be notified when future Shield Hero videos go live, and of course, it goes without saying, but there will be Shield hero spoilers here so you have been warned anyway as always grab yourself a beverage let's roll intro and get straight into the video the first aspect we're going to look into is the kindness of the shield Ruff Talia's backstory is a real tragic one, and she has endured so much pain, both physically and, of course, mentally. Ruff Talia lost her parents during one of the waves that had devastated their small coastal village. They sacrificed their own lives to that dog creature, pushing Ruff Talia off of the cliff to the sea below that she could escape with her life. Unfortunately, both Ruff Talia and many other demi-humans were caught and sold by Melramark knights, the knights who had also killed all of the surviving adults. She she and the rest of the young ones were sold to a Melramark nobleman named Idol Rabia, who was extremely perverse in his ways, getting this real sick pleasure out of torturing innocent demi-humans. Raftalia remained brave through it all, remembering that she must always smile, even in the hardest of times, but she eventually broke, when she had to witness the death of her best friend, Rifana, who became sick from the living conditions, if that's what you can even call them. They were tied up and tortured tortured, fed awful soup, and were left to rot between this. Understandably, this was the tipping point for Ruff Talia, as the trauma broke her mental state, and to top things off, she also caught the cough Rifana died of. At this point, Ruff Talia's mind was completely broken. Soon after Rifana's death, Ruff Talia was then again sold to a slave dealer in Melramog before being bought by the merchant who lived in the capital. It was here that poor Ruff Talia remained. She was alone, broken, and now very sick. It wasn't until weeks later she was bought by a man who would change her life forever. That man's name was Naofumi Iwatani. Naofumi's reasons for choosing her were of course not for kind reasons. He had just gone through an extremely traumatizing event himself and understandably was not in the right frame of mind, but the real Naofumi was still in there and he treated his new slave better than she could have ever hoped for. Now, at this point in the story, Naofumi had next to nothing, but still spent a lot on Raftalia. Time, resources, and most importantly, money. The cough she had picked up that killed her friend was now being treated as he regularly made medicine for her that he would give to her whenever she coughed. He fed her good meals to get her strength back. He looked after her by cutting her hair, making sure her health and hygiene was in good shape. And it wasn't all physical things that Naofumi provided the young Ruff Talia, but important mental help too. Remember that when these two first came together, Ruff Talia was very broken from her past trauma. The obvious one to point out was her night terrors. It was the first time we saw the real kind-hearted Naofumi shine through as he comforted her while she was screaming, and once she fell back to sleep, Naofumi spent the whole night awake protecting her from monsters. There was also the way he taught her to protect and fight. Raftalia was very hesitant and didn't want to harm another, but through his forcefulness, he managed to help her overcome her fear so she could protect both herself and him, which, let's face it, is the reason he bought her in the first place. Yes, the way he went about it was very harsh, but I feel like it really needed to be so that she could overcome her fears. She had a very noble goal of wanting to make sure that no one would have to suffer the life she did, but in order to protect these people, Naofumi had to help her surpass her own limits. To break the mental wall she was stuck behind in order to grow stronger. The other main way he helped her mental state was by simply treating her as an equal. 
The kid's meal he bought at the tavern was a huge deal to her, as one, it was a hot meal, and two, she could eat with him at the table. This simple treatment was new to her, and one she hadn't experienced since the loss of her parents. Raftalia, of course, was used to life after her parents. We saw the scene where she wet the bed, and she was extremely terrified at how Naofumi was going to react. The poor girl was expecting the worst to happen to her because, you know, that was all that she knew. Naofumi, however, only saw the absolute fear and terror in the the eyes of Raftalia staring right back at him. And though he has no knowledge really on how to deal with this kind of thing, he treated her in one way she didn't expect, with kindness. Following this, the ball he bought her too. This trivial expense at the time where he had nothing money-wise was extremely important mentally to Raftalia as this brought the first true and genuine smile to this young girl's face who probably hadn't produced a smile as such in years. Now, this wasn't in the anime, but a bunch of kids bullied Raftalia whilst Naofumi was working over this ball. Naofumi heard the incident going on and stood up to those kids in front of Raftalia in, let's say, true Naofumi style. Yes, you could, you could imagine, right? Glaring eyes. Again, a small incident, but the bigger picture was that there was someone there for her when she needed it. She wasn't alone anymore and had someone there who was looking out for her. So these early stages of Naofumi and Raftalia's time together plays a huge role in her developing feelings for him that, you know, sounds like simple reasons when you first look at it, but when broken down, paint a much bigger picture. I think it's also cute that, you know, to this day, Raftalia still has the first knife that Naofumi bought her, the flag from that first kid's meal and the ball that he bought her. Okay, the second aspect of understanding why Raftalia fell in love with Naofumi is that of the bond that the two share. Raftalia is a very important person in Naofumi's life. She is his sword and the one person he trusts more than anyone. It's no wonder that so much trust and acknowledgement is enough to make this girl feel special. The two of them spend a lot of time together. It's, you know, pretty much 24-7 throughout the first season of the anime and in such have experienced a lot together. Going through experiences like theirs is always going to forge this special kind of bond and bring them closer together as people. Not only that, but because they are spending so much time together together, they learn a lot about the other person, be it the small things such as mannerisms and routine or the major stuff such as one person opening up to another. Naofumi, as we know, is a tough cookie to break and early events in the series have made him a really closed off figure with a cold exterior. But if anyone knows just how much he has suffered, how hard he is trying and just how much of a kind hearted person he is, that's Raftalia. Knowing these details and knowing the real Naofumi as a person, in the circumstances of Shield Hero and its events, this is a really intimate feeling for her. To Raftalia, knowing she is pretty much the only one who knows these truths about Naofumi makes her feel all that more towards him. She knows that she is the one who he relies on, that she is the only one who understands him, and that she is the one who will stand up and defend him when no one else will. Being this much of an important person to him makes Raftalia feel special compared to anyone else and this drives her feelings for him romantically. It's the loyalty that she feels towards him. You know, the fact that she is his strongest pillar of support, all these contributions of what she is to him makes her happy. And I guess she almost sees their bond as a symbol of who she is to him or how she sees who she is to him, which we will touch on a bit later. Now, this almost covers the flip side of Naofumi looking after Raftalia when she was younger and is a continued play on just how much of an effect his early actions towards her has shaped her moving forward. Not only did he help her physically and mentally, but he also helped her emotionally. Yes, you could link that to mentally, but you know, the matters of the heart I feel differ. But yeah, I feel their constant time together, you know, be it good or bad, events, be them big or small, have played a huge role when it comes to Raftalia's romantic feelings. Even the small details, such as her telling him off when he is being maybe a little too tyrannical, is a nod to just how strong a relationship the two share. Okay, final point I want to cover that plays a big part in Raftalia's feelings for Naofumi is that of natural attraction. Raftalia, as we know, grew up very quick physically as she leveled. Not only did she mature faster body-wise, but also mentally and emotionally. She went from being a 10-year-old to the equivalent of an 18-year-old, and with that, of course, teenage hormones come into play. For me, I think Raftalia not only emotionally has feelings for Naofumi, but she is also physically attracted to him too. The guy isn't a bad looker, that's for sure. 
So we see this a lot later on in the first season where she is trying to get Naofumi's attention. On the surface, it's for the obvious reasons of I'm not a kid anymore, so don't treat me like one. But it's also a, hey, look at me as a woman. She definitely uses her body a lot more to try and gain his attention in that sense. And you can't blame her. Like, I've never obviously been a teenage girl myself, so I don't, don't, don't fully quote me here. But a girl needs that attention too, right? She wants him to see her in a different light. And there's no doubt he sees the strength of her heart, but, you know, she wants him to see her as something more. And I think this is through more of the, you know, the natural means rather than a focused one. But the point of physical attraction for me doesn't just mean the sexual side of things, but the attraction to Naofumi as a person too. I think she is attracted to the person he is, you know, the reason in why he fights the waves, you know, him being the shield hero even. Because of course, let's not forget that while she was being brought up by her parents, they told her how the shield hero was always kind to demi-humans. And while she was enslaved with Rifana, the shield hero was going to be the one to save them. So I think, you know, it may play only a small part in why she's attracted to him, but I do believe that him being the shield hero does add into her attraction to him. So I think the reason as to why Raftalia loves Naofumi is a cocktail of these three points I have just covered. It's the act of extreme kindness when she needed it the most. He without question changed and saved her life. It's the emotional bond the two have forged over time, sharing these new experiences together, to which none of them have gone through anything like this before. And it's that physical attraction as well as the teenage hormones that throw all these feelings into overdrive. And it's funny because when choosing to cover this topic, I thought it would be an easy one to cover but the more i dove into it the more i actually found and you know i'm sure you know i'll, I'll no doubtedly find details i've missed that i wish i'd added into this but that is it for today's video. Feels good to cover some more Shield Hero again. It's, it's been a while, right? Make sure to let me know in the comments what other Shield Hero topics you'd like to see me cover as I want to make these a more regular thing again. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like button and share this video with a fellow fan of the series. For more weekly anime content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when future videos go live on the channel. As always, a huge shout out to Warwick, Animator22, Brian, Blake, Andrew, BS Tuna, Kivase, Chris, Estel High, Zintak, and Brother Gray for supporting me on Patreon. Don't forget to head on over there now and check out what rewards are currently on offer. But that is it from me. Till next time, my fellow weebs. Peace.